Hi there, Doc from Barcast Audio here. Today to talk with you about the non-hearsay exemptions uh, as tested on evidence, in evidence, on the bar exam, uh, in law school. Let's jump right into it. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to this channel for more of these videos. Be sure to check us out at barcastaudio.com. We have audio outlines, essay attack sheets, uh, everything you need to study for the bar exam, to study for law school, whatever you may need, we have it over there. So in an earlier video, I covered the concept of hearsay uh, and the general rule that hearsay statements are generally in admissible in court. Uh, now, in this video, I'm just going to be talking about the non-hearsay exemptions. So now, these hearsay, these non-hearsay exemptions are notably different from the hearsay exceptions we're going to talk about because they are uh, out-of-court statements offered to prove something other than the truth of the matter asserted. So they're not actually hearsay. Uh, some of the most common non-hearsay uh, exemptions include, one, acts of independent significance, Two, statements offered to show effect on the listener. Three, prior inconsistent statements used for impeachment purposes. And four, circumstantial evidence of the speaker's state of mind. Remember the letters ASPCA, like those sad Sarah McLaughlin commercials where the dogs would be on the screen? And they'd be, nah, nah. Yeah. Uh, ASPC, uh, those will help remind you of the four non-hearsay exemptions. That is acts of independent significance, uh, S, statements offered to show the effect on the listener, P, prior and consistent statements, uh, and C, circumstantial evidence of the speaker's state of mind. ASPC. Let's talk some examples now. Don is charged with assaulting Peggy. At trial, the prosecution seeks to introduce out-of-court statements from Peggy describing the room in which the assault allegedly took place. The defense objects to these, claiming that Peggy's statements are inadmissible as hearsay. Will the court agree? The answer here is that Peggy's statements are admissible as non-hearsay exemptions uh, because they are not being offered for the truth of the matter asserted. Peggy's statements are admissible as to demonstrate her knowledge of the scene of the alleged crime rather than the truth of whether uh, Don actually assaulted her. Let's talk about another example here quickly. Uh, Teddy sues Bob after he slips and falls in Bob's restaurant. At trial, uh, plaintiff's counsel seeks to introduce an out-of-court statement from Linda, who claims she told Bob that the floor was slippery just minutes before Teddy was injured. Bob's counsel objects, arguing that this statement is inadmissible hearsay. Is the court likely to agree? The answer here is no. Uh, this statement is admissible non-hearsay, as it is being offered to show the effect on the listener. Namely, that Bob had notice of the dangerous condition that resulted in Teddy's injury, rather than the truth of the matter asserted. This does it for our short video on uh, the non-hearsay exemptions uh, to the rules of evidence, to the rules for hearsay. Be sure to check us out at barcastaudio.com. Be sure to uh, subscribe to this channel for more of these videos. Until later, I will talk to you guys soon. Bye now.